You are very inappropriate. I like being inappropriate. Broadscast is entertaining. Come on, if I can't mess with you, this is not going to be fun. Broadscast is thought-provoking. That is a riveting revelation, Ms. Goldman. Broadscast is unexpected. Who do you like better, the person that people think you are or the actual you? Oh, God. Because they're nothing alike. Broad topics, broad minds, broad hosts, but not just for broads. We are man-friendly. I, I hope to be. I am man-friendly. I can't say the same about Kim. Wait, that sounded bad. <laughs> this is Broadscast with Kim Goldman and Jackie McDougal. Welcome to Broadscast. Hi, hi. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everybody. I'm Kim Goldman. I am Jackie McDougal. Welcome. Hey, so uh, I'm really excited about today. Why? Because we're going to get fixed Oh, sweet. <laughs> so, you know, when you're all like, I can't, I actually, d- does this happen to you? Wait. I oh. sometimes see people that I've known for a very long time and I can't remember their name. Yeah. Does that ever happen to you? All the time. Like I literally somebody who's in your life. Like, yeah, I have a hard, I have a hard time recalling. I had, I, I, this is what happens to me a lot. Someone will say, hi, I'm Bob. Nice to meet you. And I'm like, hi, Jerry, I'm Kim. <laughs> I, I don't understand that. But I, I, that is not a joke. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. Yes. Is it though? <laughs> yeah. I find myself. It is funny. Daydreaming. Yeah. I can't recall words. Words, words. Totally. I mean, which is awesome when we are, you know, have a podcast that we barely edit because we're like, you know, that thing with the, with the thingamajig. Yeah. You know? Hey, I'm yeah. a, I'm a writer and words don't come <laughs> yeah. to me. I, yeah. yeah. I got nothing. But at least when you're writing, like it's not on the spot for usually, but anyway, um, we're going to talk to Dr. Diana Bittner, who is the answer to our prayers. Dr. Diana. Yeah. <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah, this Making is happening. Song? No, but no, <laughs> I bit. Yeah. One of the cool things about today is episode is we're all about making your life better. And so we have a awesome sponsor. Sponsor. Zeal. Z-E-E-L. Oh. So get this. What? You go online, right? And you can order a same day in-home massage. Oh, we've been talking about this. Licensed and vetted massage therapists. You just book it, a five-star massage. You connect with a Zeal massage therapist. They come to your home, hotel, office in like, sometimes within an hour, or you can schedule it in advance as well. And then you have a spa quality massage seven days a week, um, 365 days a year. Like it's, it's. Wowzers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sounds so easy. If you head over to broadcast.com slash Zeal uh, slash Z-E-E-L, you get 25 bucks off. Oh, 25 bucks off. Way to bury the lead. <laughs> no, but seriously, like have them come to your house. Mm-hmm. I'm actually thinking about doing a little couples massage. Don't, well, m- you know, my husband's not listening, so that's fine. And surprising him and doing a couples massage, and then we get 25 bucks off. Nice. Or we could have different accounts and we both could get 25 bucks <laughs> off. Oh, and then I could get an account and then I get $25. Well, everybody, off. yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can all do it here. That would be not awkward at all. <laughs> but you go to broadcast.com slash zeal, Z E E L. And um, you'll get all the information and get your 25 bucks off, try your massage and let us know how it is. Because I think massage, you know, it's one of those things where they say that there are so many benefits and I just feel so guilty when I schedule it in my day. Well, and I think um, our guest is going to support why uh, some of those benefits are so hugely important. So, um, you know, it's good timing that we're having a massage discussion on the day that we're having um don't Dr. you think? Dr. Diana. Yeah, yeah see? Yeah. We're going into yeah. the summer just feeling like... Renewed. Renewed. For yeah. sure. <laughs> All right. So um, we are going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with Dr. Diana Bittner. Subscribe to Broadcast on iTunes. Welcome back to Broadcast. So uh, one of the questions we constantly ask ourselves around here is <laughs> Kim losing her mind. <laughs> so no, but Kim, we, we wait, why you. just me? <laughs> I know we know I like you've it. lost yours. So I, I guess we're just wondering my, if I've lost mine's mine too. been gone for a very, there very long go. time. There you go. So but seriously, we as women uh, in our 40s, um, we, we do wonder sometimes like, What's normal? Am I losing my crap here? Like, so we're, we're going to find out what's normal. I think today is very good. So listen up, ladies. We have Dr. Diana Bittner. Um, she's a board certified obstetrician and gynecologist. I almost said gynecologist. Um, 
fr- she received her medical degree in Detroit. And she's like, she's amazing. And uh, tw- the 2015 Menopause Practitioner of the Year. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Bittner, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Thank you for coming on because, you know, this is something Kim and I talk about, but also, you know, constantly with girlfriends and, and you know, fellow moms out there, we're just not really sure what's normal. I mean, Kim, you were telling me earlier. Uh, yeah, I, I was saying, I, I think from the time that I... Okay, so I'm I'm 45. I'll be okay. Um, okay, yeah, I'm 45. <laughs> and I remember going into a, my my gynecologist one day, and she was asking me how I'm feeling. And I said, you know what, I I I don't know. I feel like a space cadet. I said, I feel like I'm constantly stoned. I said, I well, having having only smoked pot once in my life. Um, just kidding. Uh, and I said to her, like, I drove into Target parking lot one day, and I wandered in the store. And I thought, what? Why? Why am I here? I don't remember driving here. What? What am I doing here? And I walked out, oh, got back. Oh. And she said to me, how old are you? And I said, I just turned 40. She's like, yep, that's the jackpot number, you know? And I said, what? <laughs> and I literally, she said it, it you know, it, it's not uncommon for, for women that have reached that age bracket to start feeling some of these things. Um, and it's just progressively gotten worse. I mean, yeah. I, I literally, I just What's wrong feel... with us, Dr. Bittner? Well, Can you I tell mean, us? Just, so... I mean, what you're, what you're talking about my patients talk about all day long. And that was why I got into this whole midlife and menopause stuff is that I, as a basic OBGYN, I didn't know how to answer pe- answer people's questions. And I didn't like that. You know, us doctors, we like to fix stuff. And so I wanted to know why I didn't want to just pat you on your head and say, this is normal. And, um, you know, good luck with that. So there, 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 there is a lot to back this up. Well, so one of the things that, not one of the things, a lot of the things I feel cool. is just like spacey, lethargic, um, no matter how much I eat or drink or exercise, I still end up kind of feeling just like I'm not present. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm kind of forgetful. Uh, I write stuff down and then really can't remember where I put the piece of paper that I wrote it down. <laughs> um, I find myself completely, oh, no, no, no. yeah, I find myself completely tuning out in conversations and I've talked to a lot of women and we've sort of decided that it's because we're so busy, but that's not a so, good enough answer for me. Yeah, so what are you causing this? Yeah. Well, so here's, may I ask you a couple of questions? Shall we use you as an example? Yay. We always use me <laughs> as an fair? example. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, perfect then. Well, and I and I could be right there with you, um, but I figured out ways to get around this. I'm 50, so I've had to kind of deal with this myself, and I have a lot going on. So the questions I would ask you: number one, are you having regular periods? No, you're not. So what? Are but you I never periods? have for my whole life. I never have. So that's not totally uncommon. All right. So right before a period, when you do have them, do you get any hot flashes or night sweats? No. 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 Uh-uh. And how are you sleeping? Um, I don't sleep great, but I have also not been sleeping great for about 24 years. Um, but I have, I have a hard time sleeping. However, in the last like two, uh, like year, I've been having these radical, like, oh my gosh, close my eyes and out cold, like can't even keep my eyes open. So you can fall asleep. Can you, do you stay asleep? No. So when you wake up in the middle of the night, what happens? Um, I lay there and think, oh my God, another freaking night of me being awake in the middle of the night. And then my mind starts to, oh my gosh, we can fix this. This is so fun. Add a girl, go get him. (laughs) So how long does it take you to get back to sleep? Or are you up for the rest of the night? I'm up for a long time. So hours. Yeah, probably. And then I watch the clock, which I know you're not supposed to do. Yeah. So how many hours of sleep are you getting? Um, I would say uh, probably uh, four or five Oh my God. I know. I know. Okay. We can fix this. So, um, again, if you were here in my office, I would ask a little more personal questions of vaginal dryness and all that. We don't necessarily have to go there, but have you ever had an FSH level checked in terms of a hormone level? So basically on that docs who check a lot of hormone levels, estrogens and progesterones and LHs, we don't really need all that. So Tells me they're not a certified menopause doc for the most part. Sometimes there's time for that. But have you ever had a blood level FSH or follicle stimulating hormone? Um, I, I, I believe so. I had all my hormone levels checked and I was told I was normal, like whatever normal means. The only thing, the only thing they found was that my vitamin D level was low. I'm not anemic. Um, I'm, my yeah. weight is fine. Um, but they did say that my vitamin D was uh, deficient. all of our vitamin D down? Well, it is if you live north of Atlanta, 
um, and you are not taking vitamin D because, for example, in a glass of milk with vitamin D, maybe there's 10 units of vitamin D and we need 2000 units a day if we're average weight. Oh. If women are really overweight, we need more because it gets stuck in the fat and it's not available. And if you're really thin, you probably only need a thousand. So the average dose is right around 2000. And that's based on good data from the vital trial. So this isn't, you know, me putting everything in the vitamin D bucket. We need that much D. So wow. you're vitamin wow. D deficient if you're not taking 2000 units a day. I am not. <laughs> Please start taking your vitamin D. Okay. I think that's so, everybody. So, I mean, I, I, you know, we're using him as an example here, but I think that this is such a universal thing. Well, I, had, I was telling Jackie, I had yeah. a conversation with a friend last night who went and had her brain checked because she was convinced she had a brain tumor. I mean, and I hear this, I hear this a lot. Yeah. Well, and people you, will even ask me, like, am I getting dementia? Right. And, and I'll say, well, I'm just going to talk as if I were dark. You know, do you do you remember to brush your teeth? Well, yeah. Do you remember to close the refrigerator? Well, most of the time. Do you remember to wipe your bottom? Well, yeah. Well, you don't have dementia. You know, it's it's when we get into that situation where we can't remember stuff, you know, it has so much to do with this flight or fight. And we'll we'll talk about that because I really think that's the basis. But sleep is everything because when we sleep, it's when we make our brain chemical. So our brain chemicals and our brains have time to rest and their brains do so much when we're sleeping. So if you're juggling, juggling work and family and friends and, you know, stuff that we all are, um, we need all those brain chemicals to cope with our, with our life events. So each life event costs brain chemical. So if it's a little life event, Packing lunches, you know, that doesn't cost so much brain chemical, but heaven forbid we've lost a parent or we have a sick parent or our kids are doing stupid things or, you know, there's stress at work or stress with money or women who deal with heaven forbid violence or abuse or, you know, situations that are unresolved cost a lot of brain chemical. And if you're not sleeping, you're not going to make that brain chemical. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, if you've had trauma, for example, based on the things that you're just saying, and it was a long time ago, and you've been still dealing with trauma, how do you recoup all of those years of of yeah. loss of sleep? I mean, can you have a couple of good nights and a vacation, and that just sort of re it re, yeah. re refurnish I mean, re, refurbishes recharges recharges I don't know yeah. re something. <laughs> but this is how I think about brain chemical. So serotonin is a main brain chemical us girls depend on, right? And so serotonin, I want you to think about it like money in the bank. So picture a balance sheet. You make brain chemical when you sleep. And genetically, some of us make more than more brain chemical than others. I mean, some families, just nobody makes any brain chemical. And if they're not on Prozac by 10, they're not doing so well, right? Or, you know, but, but some families just don't make brain chemical. Other families make a lot. I mean, picture people who you know that, shoot, anything happens to them and they are just fine. They just handle it. They're happy. They're functional. They're great. They probably make so much brain chemical. So that's part of it. Back to the balance sheet. So we make it when we sleep and we spend it for each life event. And the reason I'm asking you about your estrogen levels and your periods is that when your estrogen levels go down, you go through brain chemical quicker. So think of postpartum. Mm -hmm. So it's a physiology that happens when you have a baby, right before a period, and in perimenopause and menopause. So as your estrogen goes down, you go through brain chemical quicker. So let's say you have a baby. You don't sleep. You have a huge new life event of a new baby, um, and your estrogen is down because you just delivered that placenta making lots of estrogen. And so you're estrogen deficient. Postpartum depression has its basis in that physiology. So, so again, if we have a deficit of serotonin, so if we're not making enough, we're not sleeping, we're spending too much on this crazy busy life, and especially right before a period or in menopause when our estrogen is low, we go through it quicker, we have a deficit. Make sense? Totally. So never, if we have a yeah. deficit of serotonin, then we're not able to focus. We're not able to, you know, think straight. And then on top of it, heaven forbid, we have a lot of trauma or unresolved stuff. It uses up a lot of dopamine, which is our pleasure brain chemical. Um, and if there's any genetic imbalance as well with other stuff, you know, let's say we had adverse childhood events, then maybe, you know, the norepi is down as well. So there's a whole neurochemical balance that we need to feel like ourselves. And so, number one, we, so we go back to habits. Number one, we got to sleep. 
So you want to talk about the sleep thing for a sec? Okay. Okay, good. (laughs) So what happens in the middle of the night kind of reflects what happens in the middle of the day when you forget something. So in the middle of the night, everything is scarier. We're laying there and, you know, we start to get mad that we're not going to sleep and we're just... You know, like you said, oh, my God, one more night that I can't sleep. So what us girls tend to do is we catastrophize. And so what's so important, I think, is to, first of all, right when you wake up, think, I got this. I don't need to catastrophize. I got this. And then right away, get up. Go pee. Drink a glass of water. Go out to the living room or the kitchen, wherever your zen spot is, and just sit there quietly and think of three things you're thankful for. So three gratitudes and gratitude is known to get us out of that flight or fight quicker than anything. Okay. So we think about a couple of things we're really thankful for and then just sit there and close your mouth, open your eyes, stare at a spot. This is yoga breathing, stare at a spot and just breathe and just focus on the sound of your breath. And you, you know, you might start thinking about something fine. Think about it for a second, go back to the sound of your breath and you will quiet your mind. Do that if you can for three to five minutes. And then you go back to bed, snuggle up and you're out. Let's say you lay there and you say, you know, that was stupid. That didn't help me at all. (laughs) Right. (laughs) What I want you to do is get back up and do it again. You got to retrain your brain. It's kind of like, you know, when the baby is getting off the pacifier or off the bottle, it takes about three or four nights of like the Betty Ford clinic that, you know, you've got to, <laughs> that you've got to retrain the baby to go back to sleep. Yeah. You've got to do the same thing for you. You've had years of this. So it's going to take more than one time to get your brain ready to go back, you know, to sleep. So it might take four times the first night, four times the second night, three times, two times, one time. And then you're waking up I mean, I can't even tell you, you know, how it works. It works so well. Um, Sometimes I'll be, you know, the same thing is I'll wake up with a night sweat and I'll say, oh, what the heck? And then I'll, I'll go, I tell everybody else to get up. I got to do this myself. So I'll get up, I'll go to it. I go back to bed. I'm out. It, 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 it works. Sleep, I think obviously is huge. And and Kim's been struggling this, you know, with this for such a long time, but you know, you say, you also say perfectionism is sort of a uh, a problem that we all suffer from that could really mess things up for us. Mm-hmm. It is because I think, again, it gets, goes back to all the shoulds, you know, and who knows what voice started that in your mind or if it's just your own voice, the fact that you want to be perfect. But I, again, I think this might simplify things too much, but it's to have gratitude. You know, when we get into that place of I'm not enough or I didn't do enough or I don't have enough, it's to go back to gratitude And the more we practice gratitude, we're able to cope with any, you know, little events. What I love, I've heard, I've heard this before and I I didn't make it up, but I love the phrase, you can't learn to swim in the middle of a storm. You can't learn to relax if you don't practice. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite books about this is called The Relaxation Response. Have you heard of that? No. No. It uh, was written by a Harvard, famous Harvard researcher, um, I think it's Benson or Benston, I, I, I'm embarrassed, I, I'm blanking on his name, see, that flight or fight thing, <laughs> but, I, um, but, but it's an amazing book written in 75, I think they've written another book since, but it's that whole concept of when we go into flight or fight, so let's say you're with a friend, she's got a great outfit on, or she looks amazing, and you're like, oh my God, I don't look... I don't look as good as her or whatever it is that puts you into that perfectionist mode. It's almost like we go into flight or fight and we are like in survival mode and we're thinking about that. We get distracted. If we can just say two or three things quietly to ourselves that we're grateful for, it brings us back out of flight or fight. We re- reconnect with our smart part. We, we hear that voice. I'm good enough. I'm fine. Let's, let's enjoy this friendship for whatever, whatever it is that gets you through. But it's that flight or fight that makes you not remember things. It's amazing. It, it, it sounds so simple. I mean, obviously, it's not easy simple. or we would all do it. But like, right. it's a very, it's simple. You know, and I think it's just a different way of looking at it. And it's not like, oh, we all need now sleep meds or, you know, be no. driving and eating on Ativan or whatever the but heck. Do you, but, but do you think that there's anything to be said for Because I'm convinced of this. Um and I'm looking for validation. Um, do you think there's anything to be said for, you know, the the fast pacedness of our society with the internet and 24 hour news cycle and social media and the phones and, and that 
that we don't retain or that we're just, I mean, I feel like I'm always looking at my phone and I'm, and I'm scanning and I'm just, I'm retaining, you know, bits and pieces and, you know, there's and no, I think, that's, I think it's okay if you also practice chill out time, you know? So again, the, the concept in the relaxation response book that I learned, and I heard a lecture by one of the um, um, postdocs that works at his lab, it's called cortical deactivation. So what I want you to think about is your brain has three main parts. It has the frontal cortex, which is the smart part. It's like the adult brain. Then we have the limbic system, which is the emotional response. It's where we go to when we're stuck in that flight or fight. You know, like the fire alarm goes off, you can grab your phone, you run out. You know, you're not thinking higher order thoughts. You're survival mode. And then there's the brain stem, which does like blood pressure and temperature kind of stuff. That's survival, you know, basic survival. So what happens when we go into flight or fight, any little thing like, oh, I didn't check my phone or, oh, there's three tweets. Do I retweet them or, you know, whatever, you know, or again, we see somebody that, oh, I don't want to see them. I, I got to get out of here. Whatever it is that puts us into that little flight or fight, we deactivate our frontal cortex. So we're not thinking adult thoughts. We're instantly a teenager. So when we're stuck in that teenage brain, we don't store memories well. So if we're meeting, you know, a bunch of friends and we see a couple new people and we're thinking about what, you know, what so-and-so is wearing or whatever, we're not going to store memories of those names because we're in flight or fight. And then later on, we're not going to be able to retrieve memories because we never stored them. Does that make sense? So oh, that's like, really I can't remember a name if I didn't. So for me, you know, when I'm meeting a new patient, the last thing I'm thinking about is her name because I'm listening to her story and I'm kind of doing a Sherlock Holmes and watching how she talks and, you know, I'm watching for little cues. And so I'm really focused on her and her story. The last thing I'm going to remember is her name unless I make myself remember her name, right? Because I can only think of so many things at once. We have to really, like, I'm going to remember her name because I've got so many things to store. And later on, you know, let's say I know I remember her name, but I'm freaking out because I forgot it. If I can say a couple things that I'm grateful for, go back into my smart part, turn on my adult brain, now I can retrieve that memory. Does that make See, sense? It does. And to me, that sounds so exhausting. <laughs> like I, 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 as I'm not, well, I, I'm, I'm teasing you. It, 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 okay. it, it is, it is a retraining of the brain. And I think that's something, um, you know, that we forget as I'm listening to you and I know that you're going to think I'm a turkey now, but I do mental yeah. health treatment in my other life. Um, cool. and we talk a lot about like, um, you know, uh, quiet time and balance and, you know, taking, taking care, self-care is so important. Um, and when you said before, like you tell your patients to do this and I find that I'm telling my clients to do this, I'm telling my staff to do this, but I don't do it myself. And I do see the connection between our mental health, um, mm -hmm. and our physical health. And I think we forget that sometimes those things are, are, are one and the same. Um, it, but it, and the other thing though is we got to make it practical. You know, you can't tell a busy woman, I, I am not going to meditate for 30 minutes twice a day. I'm just not going to do it. But so I know what I need. You know, I, even five minutes twice a day has been shown to be really helpful to sort of, you know, settle things and, or just even that quick gratitude thing. You know, I'll tell my patients, if all you do before you go to bed is, you know, 30 minutes of no screen time before you sleep. 30 minutes of no screen time. The other thing that, that inhibits sleep, just while we're on that, is really minimize the alcohol on most nights. I mean, so many women drink that first or second glass of wine. You know, I deserve it. I'm tired. I want to relax. It tastes good. Blah, Get blah, out blah. of my head, Dr. Bittner. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So it's, um, you know, what happens when we get sleepy, we fall asleep, and that alcohol wears off four hours later, and bling, you're awake. Um so if we can get off the alcohol, if we can get away from the screen for, for a half an hour before bed, write in our gratitude journal, you know, either, you know, whatever you do before bed, have sex, wash your face, brush your teeth, whatever it is that you do, when you're done with that, go out to your Zen spot, do your five minutes of yoga breathing and say three things you're thankful for and go to bed. And then when you wake up in the morning, three gratitudes to get the day started and get on with your day. If that's all you do, or if you're driving and you think about gratitude, I mean, it's such an easy way to incorporate all that good mental health stuff in just a simple practice that you just do on and off throughout the day. Does that make sense? Yeah. I love gratitude. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it has definitely changed my life. Like I really try to see 
um, the positive sometimes. But um, oh. tell us about the, the vague to-do list and why it's so bad, because we all have that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I I think it's just, I think it goes back to that, that concept of unresolved conflicts or unresolved issues. If it's a big thing, like, like abuse in the, in the past, or if it's just, you feel like this is, there's this huge number of things that I just have to get done. Um, it's again, it's like this constant buzz in the back of your brain that's using up all that brain chemical. And again, we need our brain chemicals to be in balance, to focus, to stay in our, our calm brain, our adult brain. And if we're using up all our brain chemicals, thinking about these unresolved issues, you know, you working in mental health, you know that, that, that unresolved issues really take up part of our brain function that we can't be our best health, our best person. And so for me, that undone to-do list is um, really distracting. And so I have figured out ways to get around that, um, and it really works. I, I just, and I, you know, like I said, it makes it, you make it sound easy. Okay. So what about for the people that are struggling with doing some of the things that you're suggesting? Are there other things that we could be doing that would include changing our diet, changing our exercise, vitamins? Um, my, my dad and my stepmom are obsessed with blackberry juice. Um, they feel like that has some stuff in it that I don't know. Um, Magic. No, but like, sure. are there, are there other things that we could be doing in conjunction with the things that you're suggesting? Yes. So I, um, I'm a list girl. I like to keep things simple. So I came up with, um, this acronym we've been using now for about nine years around here in our midlife and menopause clinics called the seeds, the seven essential elements of daily success. Okay. Um, and if a woman is doing her seeds, Hot flashes are better, moods are better, focus is better, everything is better because it's all about going back to the basics. This is not rocket science. But again, I'm a list girl. So if I have a day where I'm a little more stressed or I have a hot flash or a night sweat or even my patients now will come in and say, I'm doing my seeds. Oh, my gosh. So the seeds are seven things. Number one is water. If you're not drinking your water, your muscles are going to be tired. You're going to feel a little foggy. You're going to be maybe a little dizzy, a little something, something, and have more hot flashes and night sweats. So you got to drink your water, eight to 10 glasses of water a day if you're working out. So some women do fine on six, fine. You know, some women need eight. If I'm working out, I need 10. Plus, I like my strong coffee. So then, you know, I definitely need my 10 on my my day I'm having that extra cup of coffee. So, you know, a lot of women will say, well, I can't drink water because I'm busy or I'm a teacher or you know, whatever. And I say, figure it out, just buck it up. You've got to drink your water. In the first three to four days, you're going to pee a lot. But by the fourth day, your hair, your skin, your muscles will soak it up and you'll just feel better. If if I'm not drinking my water, I just feel tired and more cranky. So you got to drink your water. Sleep is important. We've talked about that on the list is seven hours a night. You know, if you're only sleeping four to five hours a night, you're not getting that second sleep cycle to where you can make your brain chemicals. Number three, vitamins. Keep it simple. A multivitamin has the basic minerals and I don't care what brand, whatever the budget allows. Just take a multivitamin and then, of course, vitamin D um, is crucial. Um, Eating a healthy diet, if you're eating, and mainly when I think about that, I think of like a Mediterranean diet with complex carbs. So, you know, for lunch today, I brought stir fry leftover from last night and then then brown rice i've got to have a complex carb to keep my blood sugar stable because of our if we eat like a white rice it goes up and then it crashes Mm. so we feel like buzzed and then sleepy so we're not our best self if we're (laughs) buzzed or sleepy so brown rice sweet potatoes quinoa there's a bread that i love i'm not promoting specifically but like a bread like ezekiel bread it's in the frozen section and it's a complex carb Um, lots of good protein to control our appetite, some healthy fat to control our appetite. And then only one treat a day, one simple carb a day, um, is on the seeds. And then in terms of activity, having that balance of stretching and strength training and aerobic exercise. And if I don't work out, I am not myself. And that's my time where my brain just goes and I think about stuff. But again, back to that concept, we can't learn to swim in the middle of a storm. We can't learn to relax our brain if we're not giving it time. So I make sure I do yoga at least twice a week, like a hard yoga where I really have to concentrate. Like I love vinyasa flow 
and I tend to, to do Baron Baptiste yoga. I just think his stuff is amazing. But, um, but by doing that vinyasa flow yoga, I'm calming my mind. Cause if you're thinking about anything else during hard yoga, you're going to tip over, right? So you practice your, you, you practice focusing and then the meter breathing. So I know I rambled a bit, but those, those seven habits I think are just crucial and it's a simple way to remember them every day. Yeah, and I'm thinking, I'm trying to count as you're going. I'm like, I don't think I do any of them. <laughs> oh, I, mean, you know, I, I don't think I do we any start, of them well. Let's even put it if that we way. Start with one. You yeah, know? but I, mean, well, I, I don't think, think I do any of them well. I mean, I think maybe that's it. I think we all do the do a like a, a, a moderated version, a half-assed yeah, version of all but, of them. I mean, seriously, I I drink water, but I don't drink eight glasses. <laughs> right. You know, sure. I sleep, and it's but not for seven it's, hours. Yeah. So I think it's really important. And, and for example, the, the, I'm very active in our North American Menopause Society, and we have a lot of this information um, on the website of the NAMS. It's menopause.org. And women can find a certified menopause practitioner in their area if they go to the website, menopause.org. Anyways, at NAMS, you know, we, we've talked about studies on lifestyle on trigger avoidance to improve hot flashes and night sweats and randomized controlled trials don't show benefit. But I think my point and why I do the work that I do in, in studying this is that we have to look at all of them together. If you just look at one of those things in isolation, it might not make a difference. It's the impact of doing all those basic habits most days. Right. Right. And and okay. I think that, you know, as you know, Kim's got a 13 year old, I've got three kids between 10 and 13. And, mm -hmm. you know, they're at an age now where we can kind of start getting back to that. You know, I think exactly. when they were younger, you know, four or five, like there was so much guilt, at least for me um, yep. to say, like, leave me alone for 30 minutes. I'm going to go do this. And now, exactly. um, you know, it, it's a lot easier. So I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I am extremely guilty of, and that maybe a, a lot of other women are, is you say that it's bad to drink coffee on an empty stomach. Oh, yeah, Tell us that, why. Yeah. Well, it can make heartburn worse. But even more so, if you haven't drank your water before you drink your coffee, then that coffee hits the bladder, and it can make the bladder have more urge incontinence, where you feel like you got to pee and there's not much there. Um, so it can really... It can really affect our stomach and our bladder. You know, the, the inside of the bladder has a waxy coating. And if we damage that with, let's say, coffee or high acid stuff without enough water being in there to dilute it down, then it hurts our bladder. So, you know, and the other thing for me is if I'm dehydrated or my patients, excuse me, then um, I'm going to get more shaky if I have that coffee. So I always make sure I have a big glass of water before I have my first cup of coffee in the morning. And I love my coffee. I'm not going to give it up. Um, so I just think of ways that I can make it not affect me so much. Right. And again, we get back to that list of things to do. You know, I don't mean to stress women out by saying, oh, my God, you got to do these seven things. So, you know, what I do and what I see people who do this as being more successful is every weekend or whenever that day is for you. But let's say for me, it's Sundays. I go through and I make a worry list and I group it by category. So I make my home list of, you know, what do I have to do? I have three kids. I'm single mom. I work full time. Well, more than full time. You know, I've got a lot on my mind. So I group my stuff with my home stuff, my work stuff, um, everything that I've got to do each kid. I make a little worry list each week, you know, and so what needs to get done? And then I make a schedule for the week. And on the schedule for the week, I put the menu. I put what I'm going to do exercise each day where I have to be, what meetings, what work. So it's just laid right out there for the whole week. And that. then every morning I look at my list. I put stuff on my phone. I even put my exercise on my phone. You know, I shop to the menu. I make a big pot of brown rice every weekend and roast a bunch of sweet potatoes. So I've got my complex carbs ready to go. And um, it's on the schedule. And so you know, tonight, actually, I'm going to swim on the way home and I'm going to meet a friend and then I'm going to, you know, do some stuff and, you know, go to bed. And tomorrow I've got my day planned and Sunday I have to work. I'll be delivering babies all day on Sunday. So it's, um, you know, Sunday I won't be able to work out, but I'm not stressing about it because I did I did most days this week and I know I'm going to do something post-call. It's probably a yoga day. So I have it already all mapped out so I don't have to think about it. Right. I think that's brilliant. I think, 
you know, my husband and I talk about scheduling out the week on Sundays and then we pull out our calendars and then we just start talking about other stuff. Yeah. So oh, I'm good. really going to make an effort this weekend. Good job. Good shiny. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And then we get distracted. So, but I, but I think it's really great because I think you start the week on such a positive note, you know? Well, right. and what, and what I love and what, what we try to do for our listeners too is provide you know, seemingly easy fixes that, you know, are, are, are attainable for anyone, um, no matter what stage you are in your process. And so I think that the seeds is fantastic. It's so easy to remember that. And it's so basic. We just have to, like you said, retrain our brains to do some of those things that are so, um, every, every day. I mean, those things are so every day, but I think also once you start to do it and you feel the, the benefits, it's like, it, it becomes addictive. Exactly. Like even the water thing, you know, sometimes I'll forget myself or I'll be in surgery all day and I won't drink my water. And and then I just, it's almost like I crave it and I start drinking it again, get caught back up. I'm like, oh, I feel so much better. Why did I get away from this? So, you know, we're always constantly going to be, you know, correcting little bits. But once we figure out that when we do all of it, we feel so much better. And the cool thing is it really helps the symptoms of midlife and menopause but it has a sneaky side effect of if you eat well, if you exercise, if you sleep and take your vitamin D, you'll have less heart disease. You'll have less diabetes. You'll have less um, bone loss. So not only does it make us feel better, but we have fewer comorbidities. We have fewer health problems that happen, um, which are completely preventable, which just makes me crazy. I mean, what's one of the biggest risk factors for breast cancer? It's belly fat. Why do people get chin hairs? belly fat. You know, so if we can get off the simple carbs and we can sleep, we won't get belly fat. We'll feel better about ourselves. Our clothes won't be tight. You know, how many times you stress out because your, your, your jeans are too tight. Not. I mean, that's just, <laughs> do yeah. So if your jeans are tight and you see somebody, your brain goes into that teenage brain and then you don't remember anything and you say something stupid and then you're mad at yourself even for doing that. I mean, it, it's, it's, it all ties back to are we taking care of ourselves? And then we don't have to worry about tight jeans. And then our brain works better. You see what I, I mean? It. It's like it's, it's a win-win-win. Win. <laughs> ah, wow! So now I, I can get rid of my chin fat. I mean, my chin, my chin fat, my <laughs> my chin hairs. Wow! <laughs> this was an all-inclusive <laughs> interview. <laughs> well, Doctor Bittner, we really appreciate your time today. Your 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 tips are, I think, whether you're going through menopause. I mean, I uh, had went through surgical menopause in my thirties and and it's helpful for me. It's helpful for those who aren't even close to it yet, because I think creating habits today that will last, you know, many, many years ahead, um, can only be beneficial. Well, I wrote a book about all this, which, and, and this book came from my patient saying, would you write this down? I did a pilot study of a hundred women and walked them through this process that we just talked about. And it was a hundred women. It was an IRB approved study in our hospital system. I published the results in our journal menopause in 2014 and then wrote the book because again, people said, would you just tell us about the study? Um, And the book is called, I want to age like that. (laughs) And we're still coming out with a workbook to go along with it that you can walk through your family history. What are your risk factors? What is your lifestyle like now? What do you want, you know, in the future? And then how can you make your daily habits today? And it's just so gratifying. I was recently in the airport and um, I had this woman come up to me and she said, are you, are you Dr. Bittner? And I said, yes. And her husband was right next to her and she said, honey, honey, this is the doctor who wrote the book. And he's like, you wrote the book. And I said, yes. And, <laughs> and going on vacation to celebrate the fact that she lost 30 pounds, she's sleeping, she's not stressed out anymore, she feels better, and um, she lost 30 pounds. So we're going oh, on wow. vacation. Wow. And it just made me feel good. Where do we get you know, the book? Could, <laughs> Where do I get the husband? <laughs> and we're getting low on book numbers. We've sold 4,000 books, and, um, and it's also on Kindle. So get it on Kindle now because we've got a, a new – bunch of books getting printed plus the workbook. So there'll be more soon, but it's on Amazon. And, and it's just so fun because it's just a very practical guide to putting all of this together. That's amazing. And we will also link to that um, in the show notes on broadcast.com as well as provide all your tips that you have shared with us today. Thank you so much. I think that, 
you know, we're going into summer. We can start some some new habits in the, you know, great outdoors and maybe get some walking and stretching and all that good stuff in. And uh, and this is this is very motivating. Thank you so, Thank so you, Dr. much. Bittner. Pleasure. Be well. You too. Thanks, you too. Dr. Diana Bittner, um, check out broadscast.com in the show notes and you can link to all of uh, her brilliance. Seeds. I right? like that. Oh yeah. my gosh. I love yeah. the seeds. So that's it for uh, today. Oh, crazy, right? All right. Yeah. So we'll I want to go. I want to go practice my sleeping. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Kim's going to sleep right yeah. now. See you later, people. Thanks for listening. You are listening to Broadscast. For more from the Broads, head to broadscast.com.